The second edition of the Inclusive Fintech Forum is being held in Kigali, Rwanda. A forum that has brought together more than 3,000 people drawn from different countries to a very pertinent conversations on the digital infrastructure as well as the capital market stability and cross-border payments and most importantly, the developments in the fintech landscape. Welcome to this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. I'm Flora Limuki. Rwanda is positioning itself as a leader in the fintech landscape in Africa. With 96% financial inclusion and over 75 active fintech companies serving millions, Rwanda has over time proven to be a leader in digital transformation. By 2029, Rwanda aims to host 300 fintech players and attract 200 million US dollars in investment. Africa can compete with the rest of the world and successfully innovate. When you look at our continent's startup ecosystem, fintechs continue to dominate. In recent years, the number of fintech companies in Africa has also tripled. These Enterprises, big and small, are fundamentally reshaping our financial services sector. AFCFTA has introduced a digital trade protocol which aims to streamline the digital space within member states. Enacted in February 2024, this protocol establishes a legal framework to accelerate tech-driven innovation and commerce across Africa, promoting digital trade and cooperation while ensuring a secure and trusted ecosystem. Africa is indeed becoming a major global fintech hub, showcasing rapid growth and promising future potential. With a 32% compound annual growth rate, it is said to be the fastest growing continent in fintech revenue. This projection suggests to all of us that by the year 2030, the African fintech market is anticipated to attain approximately over 65 billion United States dollars as reported by the Boston Consulting Group. The Rwanda Development Board, RDB, is at the forefront of this goal with national strategy for 2025-2029, aiming to drive economic growth. This five-year strategy, which corresponded with President Paul Kagame's new term in office following his re-election in July, comprises key focus areas of job creation, export promotion, quality of education, reduced stunting, and malnutrition, and enhanced public service delivery. Second edition, and it's really pray, playing its, its, its purpose of bringing attention to Africa about the potential, to Rwanda, but not just Rwanda, it's, it's Rwanda as a, but it's really, I think we need to look at it as, a, as the bigger continent here, you know, bringing attention to the tremendous potential of fintech in, in Africa, the, re the revolution that is happening, and, uh, and so that we galvanize the interest, but also the capital, so that we also learn from each other. There's a lot of networking going around, uh, people learning from, from each other, networking, and I think this is, uh, this, this is my takeaway. It was quite, uh, RDB was very much proud, of course, to be associated with it, and it was a huge success. Much, uh, many congratulations to the, Kigali Financial in uh, Kigali International Financial Center, and uh, I think it definitely it's definitely achieving its objectives of of bringing, you know, this this conversation around uh, the promising future of, uh, of of fintech in Africa, the challenges that we're currently experiencing, but also and most importantly, the solutions to mobilize additional capital. Uh, and, and, and bring these, these technologies and solutions uh, to Rwanda and the wider continent. The Kigali International Financial Center has been at the forefront of positioning Rwanda as a leader in the fintech space in Africa. The Inclusive Fintech Forum 2025 marked significant progress 
highlighted by the signing of Memorandum of Understanding between Rwanda, Ghana and the Pan-African Payment and Settlement System to establish a unified passporting framework for digital payments. There, there are a lot of um, partnerships being signed. Um, one of them uh, is um, how we can facilitate uh, uh, fintech uh, to scale on the continent, removing uh, um, regulatory framework barriers, right? So there's an initiative that is called Passporting License. So the idea is how, for example, a company uh, or a fintech that is regulated in Rwanda can scale in Ghana without going through the whole process of obtaining a license. And through the Global Finance Network Limited, based in Singapore, it has led in the fintech transformation and partnership with Rwanda in the last decades. A recent report by GFTN highlights a 77% drop in investments, emphasizing the urgent need for fintechs to adapt through streamlining operations and forging sustainable business models. One, know your customer. Second, money laundering. Third, market integrity. Oh, consumer protection, third. Fourth, market integrity. Fifth, financial stability. Sixth, technology risk. You go to any country, the difference between countries' regulation is the, is the process by which they want to apply this regulation. So to me, most central banks should not have a gap. It is that process and the lack of infrastructure which makes fintech find friction in the market. If you have a good digital public infrastructure, if you have good ecosystem, if you have a, a very well understood operating process, this should not be a barrier. The banking sector has also seen an exponential shift in terms of digitalization and effect of blockchain technology. The Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement, which offers the opportunity for countries to standardize, rationalize and reuse architecture, resources and best of breed services, Africa is leveraging on trading more effectively with neighboring countries. We have elevated our system to incorporate all the latest technologies, including AI, to look at the way that different countries and different people and different companies approach us. We look for intricate similarities. Can we be guided by that? Can it provide us that initial information to enable us to make an informed choice? It doesn't make the choice, it helps us as an enabling technology which means things happen faster. We can get instruments to people that much quicker. We can go through KYC process much faster. And that means that trades can happen very much easier and we can actually help individual companies to actually realize the value that they can get from that type of speed in the market. The payment landscape has also evolved in the last few years and boosting cross-border payments and trade. Tone's partnership with m -Pesa a significantly enhanced financial inclusion by enabling seamless money transfers across borders, reaching over 200 million mobile wallets in Africa. We have over 80 local currencies that we support for settlement. So as you know, SMEs or individuals per se, um, expect their um, sent money to be able to be received in local currency. So we have the capability to overcome that currency fluctuation challenge by settling in local currency to our customers. So that's one of the main challenges. But you see, uh, when you work with banks, with uh, financial institutions in general, you need to get the uh, approval from the regulators, which could be a bit different for the Africa market as it is a bit delayed when you um, make the application to hear back from the regulator to, for launch and so on. But in general, the currency fluctuation is the main challenge, but we have a way to overcome that within our product. Um, be part of the policy conversations around how can we create an open and level playing field to allow for fintech stakeholders to participate fully in these payment systems. And then secondly, also to be part of the conversations that uh, involve um, how can we enhance capacity development, leverage what we have in terms of the innovation happening in the continent, uh, to, allow the, the, to allow us to optimize the participation of fintechs and uh, support the innovation that would lead to uh, financial inclusion. Several business leaders who are gathered at the Inclusive Fintech Forum 2025 in Kigali see the potential that lies within the Rwanda market. The future for fintech in Kigali is promising 
with more partnerships having been forged here. We just launched a, an application, a mobile application, that's going to revolutionize how financial services are provided. Uh, today we've been able to, uh, to develop uh, and to do wonders on, uh, on technology, but uh, on the admin side, the back-end admin side used by, by our employees, and uh, the back, back end of it used by our developers. But we were yet uh, to do something that is on the client side. Now, the, 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 the application is just uh, right about that, uh, where uh, our clients are going to start serving themselves and they're going to, to, to do all, all of the things that you've been providing and more on the palm of their hands. Uh, today, that's uh, what we we are doing, and that's the, how the component of um, fintech tech comes in. If you if you ask, you know, any any industry, um, you know, any industry, any 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 country or any jurisdiction about the family office industry, one of the key things that people always bring up uh, is talent, which is having the right talent, and that's why I think um, having. A young population like Rwanda, you know, the, F, the median age is, is less than 20 years old, right? And, and majority of the population are still very hungry and, and, and the government's policy are pushing um, the positioning Rwanda as a wealth management hub of Africa. I think this is a very clear direction from the top. And with the young population, I think this is going to definitely do very well for Rwanda. This forum also presented an opportunity for exhibitors to showcase their products and connect with potential investors. Our objective is to get the insurtechs to showcase uh, their developments, the solutions that they've got. So out of the event yesterday, um, exciting, uh, 10 participants, uh, 9 of them actually showed uh, their events and f out of those, 5 of them uh, came out as the winners that we're hoping will be able to uh, invest in them and take them to the next level. It has been a great event, I think very excited, very happy. Uh, this is our second year actually as a sponsor of the event, as Zepri, and we are very happy with the organization, very happy with the way that uh, it went, uh, very happy with the networking. I think we are able to talk to some more startups, uh, talk to uh, other people, perhaps partners who can help us uh, make this uh, uh, Intuitech tech program much bigger and much bigger. So we are looking forward next year to doing bigger things and uh, developing the insurance industry. Well, this forum has been key in terms of forging partnership between different stakeholders that have been here with the fintechs and startups specifically, getting a chance to meet with the investors within this very space and also discussing how to tackle the regulatory complexities within the different countries in Africa. Thank you for tuning in on this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. I've been your host, Flora Limuki. Until next time, goodbye for now.